This uh, talk is titled really Seven Leadership Lessons for Women and Men uh, from a CTO. And it's focused more on career advancement, so not just leadership from the perspective of uh, you know, getting things done and being successful in getting your work done, but also uh, geared more towards career and, uh, advancement and, and how to navigate that in an organization. So I, I want to ask a question for, uh, for the room, and you, you don't need a microphone, in fact, uh, to again follow the lead f uh, from what you said earlier. You know, find your voice, speak loudly. Uh, so I, and it's not, not a trick question, but I just want to ask, uh, get a sampling from the room about, you know, to move up in your career, to progress, I want to ask you what, what, what do you think somebody needs to do? And, and don't think of it as a trick question. Answer the most obvious thing that comes to your mind about what someone needs to do to move up in your career. Be really good at at least one thing. Okay, excellent point. Uh, go ahead. Build your network because it's not all about what you know. Okay, about networking. Um, and a louder, please. Oh, managing up correctly. Okay. Okay. Exec executing. Be open to new opportunities and stretch yourself. Be open to new opportunities, stretch yourself. Give yourself accolades and wow, excellent. Okay, I think that that's a pretty. Uh, any more? Yes, please. Okay. You know, I'm actually pleasantly surprised by the responses because usually when I ask this question, people respond saying, you know, you have to do a really good job at what you're doing. And here, execution featured in about two or three responses, but most of them talked about other things. So the first lesson of the seven that I really want to talk, talk with you about is that in order to be successful in your careers, you have to really go above and beyond being really good at your job. So the point is not that you don't have to be good at your job, but I think that's table stakes. In order to be successful in your career, you first obviously have to, to, to do a great job and perform well. But a lot of what gets differentiates people and mo moves them up on the career track, especially you know, approaching the C-suite and VP level roles, are various other things. Because at that level, pretty much everybody is performing highly and, and doing a great job. So it's really about having other skills. So we touched upon some of them here. You know, you talked about managing up or about, about knowing people. But I, so I'm going to build a, b a bit on that. The first key, key thing I, I, say, I would say there is to really build relationships, constructive, genuine relationships with others. Because if you need to get things done, you're often going to need the help from other people. And I want to relate to some, uh, another piece of advice that was given in, a, in an earlier talk. It was about, you know, if you don't have anything to say, repeat what others have said or, 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 or speak to them. The way that's relevant, even in relationships, is that sometimes you know, people come and ask me, well, I would love to speak with this person, but I don't know what to say to them. And a great way to start a conversation with somebody is to quote something that they had said and then build upon that. So if you heard your CEO speak at an event or you know, a senior executive speak at an event, and there was something they said that genuinely resonates with you. you know, it's, it's preferable if it's something that you really either believe in strongly or you disagree with, but if it resonates with you, and you know, people love to hear back what they have said repeated to them. So if you, if you, if you connect with a person, you know, we, we're human, humans are that way. So if you connect with a person and build upon something that they had said, that's a great way to approach other people. So you know, it's, to, it's to first, the first step in building relationships is to get past that barrier of thinking. You know, can I really approach this person? They are a senior executive. They are the CEO of a company. They are, they're somebody important, so how do I do that? So that's the first thing. The second thing is that with relationships, you can get a lot done that you wouldn't be able to yourself. So one of the things that you know, people have found effective in their career is if, let's say, they work in some department, and they work in technology, and somebody from human resources needs help getting a custom email address or something like that. So the person in technology talks to their other friend in technology, gets this person in human resources either get the custom email al alias or whatever it is they need. Well, next time somebody in the telecom department needs help from somebody in human resources. Now, this person, you had helped them by connecting them with somebody else. You can get them help through another person. So being a hub for helping people really helps build relationships. And you know, it's something where you might feel you are not adding value. But in society, being a connector does add a, add a lot of value. Because often, without you in the middle, those people wouldn't have connected on their own. 
So, so think about relationships. The other thing I would say is that, that relationships aren't what is sometimes you know, uh, tail, uh, referred to as networking. You just go have coffee with people. You have lunch with people. But often, when people have lunches, coffees, or socialize with their coworkers, I've seen in a bunch of scenarios where it's not really constructive. Because when, if you aren't helping your coworkers in becoming successful in their jobs or getting their things done, you know, those social relationships are really weak, and they will not really benefit you from a career perspective. You know, an example is, by the way, this also helps you get past adversaries at work. You know, if you're working with somebody and you find them really difficult to, to deal with, and or let's say they're often in the way of your projects, or they often disagree with you on things. So one of the things to do is you know, find out what it is that they want to accomplish you know, personally for their career. Maybe they're looking to run a certain project a certain way. Maybe they want to get promoted. Maybe they're looking for something. And if you feel you can help them with that goal, if you directly approach a person, especially somebody who's been an adversary to you, and you say, hey, I know you want x, and I can help you towards that goal. And if you can find a way to help that person, you'll find people, one, they're really surprised. Because you know, some people are pretty combative, or they would, they would want to deal with things in a certain way. But if you offer to help other people, you will find that it'll often you know, remove the, the opposition that they have from, from dealing with you. So, you know, the first lesson really is that it's going above and beyond in what you do at your job, but not just in terms of performing exceptionally well, but also learning various social skills. You know, and you learn this. I'll, I won't repeat all, all the, the pieces of advice there, but you know, all the things about power poses, or things about behaving in a certain way, communicating, influencing. So it's really good to think of yourself, especially for the people who are technologists or work closely with technologists. You know, that the tech people often get very focused about on solving problems like engineers. You know, if you're tech people, you think, there's a logical problem. I'll find a rational and logical solution. Human beings don't really work that way. So in order to work with human beings, you have to really, you know, one of the things I like to say is, you have to, to understand the API of human beings. So you need to understand psychology. You need to understand what, what resonates with people, what clicks with them. It's knowing things like this that people like to hear back what they've said. You know, so if you know all that, you'll be able to connect better with people, and that'll help you be successful in your job. The second piece of advice I want to give you is you should constantly change yourself. And here's what I mean by it. You know, people sometimes say, hey, I'm really having trouble getting to the next level in my job. I've been a director very long. I want to become a VP. I've been a VP very long. I want to get a next bigger role. Or you know, I've been a manager. I want to become a director, anything like that. And they say, so you say, well, OK, you need to do the following things. Or you know, perhaps you suggest some books, advise a, suggest a coach, or you give them any piece of advice. People say, but wait, you're telling me to do things differently, but I've been successful you know, for the last seven years in this company. I became a director. I've run all these projects well. What do you mean I need to behave completely differently? So the first thing there is to always remind ourselves that what got us to a certain point, those are not necessarily the skills that will take you to the next level. In fact, sometimes they are, they are contradictory. You know, so, what you, so one has to really realize that the skills and the things, like for example, being a programmer, being a really good programmer, sometimes being an individual contributor, may have gotten somebody promoted to being a manager. As a programmer, maybe they didn't really go ask other people for a lot of help. And we talked about that, about you know, giving up and, uh, and asking for help in the other presentation. So you know, they have to, to shift their, their thinking. It's a change of mindset to say, oh, wait, now I'm, in, I'm a manager. In fact, I should probably not start telling people how to do their technical work. You know, we all have this, this urge to do, which I saw best exemplified in a, in a Dilbert cartoon where there was the pointy-haired boss standing behind and saying, you know, now move the right, mouse to the right, to the left, to the left, and, and click it, click it. You, know? you don't really want to do that as a technologist. If you are a, a technology person, again, to be an effective manager, you have to understand the API of, of, of human beings. Uh, part of that is also to learn new skills. You know, things that worked for you before may not work. In fact, they may backfire. The other reason you really want to change is you know, people often talk about moving up in a career. But what's also equally important is staying in your current job or being, continuing to be successful. And if you remain the same person after a while, another thing to know about human beings is that people learn your strengths and weaknesses. They know how to work around you. And they know how to work, you know, how to, how, how to really negotiate with you, deal with you. So if you have been really successful in your job and things have worked before, you still need to change that. 
because let's say you're, a, you're the kind of leader who's very nice or non-confrontational. People may be able to, and you know, it's not like people would be malicious or be thinking actively about how to interact with you. Humans adapt. You wouldn't realize it, they wouldn't realize it, but they would learn to work with you in, in ways that are not in your or the organization's best interests. So you need to really switch things up and change sometimes just for the sake of changing. So that, that's another critical thing. Uh, you know, another way to think about it is, you know, like, and also like rebooting a computer or rebooting a machine, you need to, to start fresh. And one way to do that is, you know, every six months, nine months, or every year, look at your job and think about what would you do differently if you had just come into this new job and you were in, you know, what people call the honeymoon period in a job. So if you are in that state, you might do things differently. You might not know all the people. What's one of the, of the things, for example, that you might do in a job if you are new? You would work on building relationships with other people in the company. You know, many of us, after a while, we think, ah, we're, we're here, we're settled, and we don't need to, to invest time on that. You know, another thing you might do new in a job is you might develop, you know, what, a 90-day plan or a method, methodology. You, you may introduce new ideas because you are not afraid. You know people are listening. So if you really, if you think about reinventing yourself at least once every year in your job, and another way to do that, by the way, is to even tell other people that that's what you're doing so that they aren't surprised or that they know to expect something different from you. So that the change part is, is really important. The third piece of advice, I think it's pretty critical in order to be successful, you know, you have to te test and learn. And uh, you know, it's something we talk a lot in technology. But what's also key in testing and learning is that you have to take risks, and at times, the risks will go badly for you. I've done this a number of times in my career, you know, writing a, a note to a more senior executive in very bold language, or trying to ask for something, or asking for a change. You take risks, and a lot of times, people are afraid to take the risks. What you have to really look at, it, look at uh, for your career is that over the long term, if you take smart strategic risks and you'll, be, you'll get better and better as you, as you take them, you will find on the average, on the long term, you'll be a lot better off. So the key is you know, at times if there are things that you think about, you know, whether I should speak up or not, or even to go back to the example I mentioned earlier, you know, if you heard the CEO speak at, at, at some event or in your company and you want to connect with them and have a conver conversation, learn something, something more, you decide to email them. A lot of people are afraid to do that. You know, but people, you know, so, so they're afraid to do that. And in a few cases, your emailing the CEO directly might actually get you in trouble. You know, and there are some companies that are extremely hierarchical where that may not be, that may kind of be, be frowned upon. But I, I would suggest you should still do it because if you do it enough times, it'll overall work out in your favor. So I think testing and learning, taking risks, that's, that's pretty important. Uh, the fourth piece of advice I want to give you is that it's important, you know, a lot of people talk about the need for being self-aware. But what's also really important is to be self-aware in real time. It doesn't really help if later on you say, oh, I wish I had said that. <laughs> no, you know. So you should be aware in real time of what you're saying, how other people are perceiving you, which is why face-to-face -face communications really help. You know, if you are giving a talk in a room and if I see everybody else is, you know, like losing interest in the session, then maybe I should change it up. Or if you are participating in a meeting and you look at other people looking at you in a strange way, like they don't know where you, what planet you came from, you, you need to respond. At times, engage with people. And if you are making a mistake, you know, try to correct yourself in real time. So I think, being self-aware is, of course, a value that, that we all learn. But it's also really important to be self-aware in real time. That's, again, going to help you, again, in dealing with the, the API of other human beings and being successful with them. Uh, the fifth item from, the, from the, the list of seven is it's important to focus on other people's positive attributes and strengths. And I'm not saying this from any you know, grand ethical or you know, big uh, moral perspective that you should only focus on other people's strengths. But w what I mean here is that specifically, if you focus on other people's strengths, and particularly about what you can learn from them, it's going to make you stronger. You know, in multiple organizations, I've heard people come up to me and say, you know, so-and-so got promoted because they are you know, a white male, because they knew the CEO, because they, for this reason, because they don't do anything, but they still, but they promote their work well. It's a common complaint that people, you know, as a leader, you might hear from others about, why somebody else got something and you feel that they don't deserve it. And the thing is, 
that doesn't help you. For whatever reason, that person got promoted because of their race, gender, relationships, magic, whatever else. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to help you. So what's key is you should focus on what is it that that person is doing well? You know, even if you despise that person as a shameless self-promoter, think of it this way. You know, even, even if you despise the person as somebody like that, think, hey, wait, you know what? That's something I could learn from them, not the shameless part, but maybe the, the marketing part. Maybe that's something I can learn from the person. And if you start thinking about people in a more positive light, two things will happen. One, as they interact with you, they'll re respond to you more positively. You know, humans, we take a lot of, you know, people who study neuroscience and cognitive sciences, we take a lot of cues from others. And if you go in thinking about this person is incompetent and they got in that job because of, you know, some other reason, you might often find that that's not really the reason. And if you focus on other people's strengths from the perspective of what can I learn from this person, you will learn from them and you will be happier too. You know, you, if you feel that resentment, it'll only, only hold you back. So I would suggest strongly that if there are people you find in roles, in roles of leadership, just focus on what's good about them, what can you learn from them? And then to tie it back to the first point, ask them sometimes. You know, ask them about, hey, I think you're really good at X. Can you advise me? Can you teach me on how to become better at that? In that process, not only will you learn something, but that person is likely to become an, an ally. So, you know, focusing on, on the positives of people is really important. Uh, number six. So, you know, you should really think about what differentiates you from others, including your weaknesses, and try to convert that into something that in, into attributes that make you valuable. You know, there are people who are successful who went to Harvard Business School, people who are successful who studied engineering at MIT, but there are also people who are incredibly successful who never went to college, never had never got a degree. So, you know, you have to look at these things and find ways to connect. You know, in fact, uh, Joe Ito, who's on the board of the New York Times, founder of the uh, Creative Commons and many other companies, is a celebrity in Japan. He heads up the MIT Media Lab. So the director of the MIT Media Lab doesn't have a college degree. So don't let these limitations, you know, make, make it feel like you can't do certain things because of certain rules apply. In fact, if you are somebody who doesn't have a degree, you have a, now a way to connect with Joe Ito on. So, you know, think about converting your disadvantages into your advantages. If you think you belong to a certain, you know, a gender, race, social group, whatever, that is not represented in your workplace or in, in the kind of profession you're choosing, don't think that, oh, you know, people of my race or my background or my gender or something, you know, don't get certain jobs. Well, see how you can position your differentiation to be an asset to a company, whether they are looking for diversity or they are simply, you know, in fact, if you are different and you are seen as different, you'll be more memorable and therefore more eligible not only for you know, career growth in the company but for, for finding other things. Uh, the last point really that I want to speak to, and this is perhaps the most important advice I can give you, and it ties in a bit to the self-reflection in real time, uh, especially the, the self-awareness part I talked about, is you must bridge the knowing-doing gap. Because a lot of us know things about leadership. You know, I speak at a lot of conferences about leadership. I write on my blog about leadership. I give advice to a lot of other people who come back and tell me, oh, this was great, really helped me out a lot. And then I find myself struggling in my job and in encounters in various things where I find, wait, I don't seem to follow the advice of what I told other people. You know, I, I advise this person that they should go and connect more with others and that'll help them. But wait, I'm eating my lunch alone here at my desk doing, do, doing my email. <laughs> so. You know, knowing something is important, but until you bridge that gap between knowing and doing something, it's very difficult to be successful. And to bridge that gap, it's not something you do once, but on a regular basis. And there are ways, from a human psychology perspective, you can make yourself more effective. You know, they, they talk about New Year's resolutions. So how do you keep New Year's resolutions? The first thing to do is to actually write them down preferably with, on a pen and paper, not necessarily on a computer, but even a computer is fine. But you write them down. That's going to help reinforce that in your mind. The second thing you do is you tell other people. So if you're out there, say in an event like this, and I'm talking with you about, about leadership and giving you these seven pieces of advice, it kind of forces me to follow these, these things. 
because next time I'm, you know, I've made a public commitment, social commitments are something that really work in terms of changing your own behavior. So one of the things you'll find is that it's a good idea to start writing about leadership. It's a good idea to start talking about leadership, helping out other people, advising them about leadership, because the first thing is, you know, it's much easier to advise other people than to do something yourself. <laughs> but what you will find in that process is that you will start holding yourself accountable. Just like I have this list of seven things, now I have a lot more incentive to hold myself accountable to these. So not only will writing about leadership, writing or talking about management, giving the advice to other people help the other people, it'll help you know, get your name out there as, as somebody who's interested in leadership or is supposedly good at leadership, but it'll also force you to follow that advice. So, th so that's the last thought I want to leave you with, is that remember anything that you hear about, read about leadership, read articles and blogs and other things, you have to always say, am I behaving this way, if it makes sense to you, and try to put it in action. And that's the, the thought I would leave you with. Thank you.